Today, it's all about this guy. We're talking rutabaga. I kind of have a feeling that rutabagas might be the next big thing. I feel like they are one of those vegetables that haven't really had their moment, but why not? They're so good. Flavor-wise, they're pretty turnipy, but a little bit sweeter and less kind of bitter peppery. And they're just, they're really big, so you can do a lot of cool stuff with them. You can cut them into big chunks. You can make them into noodles. A lot of people use them for like vegetable noodles. Um, you can grate them, you can eat them raw, you can eat them cooked, you can mash them, you can roast them. And um, they're just all around great. You may also know them as a Swede. In uh, the UK, they're known as Swede, which is short for Swedish turnip. And apparently they're a cross between a turnip and a cabbage, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I'm gonna make three recipes with rutabaga today. Let's do it. The first recipe I'm gonna make is the simplest and it is a rutabaga mash. So this is just one rutabaga, one potato and one carrot that's been chopped up pretty roughly, but they're all, everything's roughly the same size. And I'm just gonna do a quick mash so that you basically do it the same way you would potatoes or anything else. A bit of salt and a bit of water. I never cover my, like when I'm boiling potatoes and stuff, I never cover it all the way. I don't like boil it in deep water. I basically just do like a shallow boil and then the top just kind of steams. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm gonna get it onto the stove on full blast and then when it boils, I'll just turn it down and let it cook for like 15, 20 minutes or until everything's really tender. I'll finish up the mash at the end of the episode, but for now I wanna tell you about the second recipe, which is rutabaga latkes. If you've had latkes before, these are gonna be really similar, kind of like a shredded potato pancake, uh, like exactly a shredded potato pancake. <laughs> So it's a shredded rutabaga pancake instead. So all I did was take one rutabaga and one onion and I grated those on a box grater and then squeezed all of the juice out. So I do that through a tea towel just cause it makes it easier to get all the juice out. Squeeze it really, really well. Cause rutabaga is really, really juicy. Rutabaga has a lot of moisture in it. So you really want to squeeze it out. And then I just dumped that back into the bowl, added 15 grams, so about a tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese, as well as three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of potato starch. And then I just tossed that all together with my fingertips and it looks like it's not gonna hold together. It looks like a big fluffy kind of like, just like fluffy snowflakey kind of texture, but I promise it will. So once you've got that mixture, Heat up a pan on the stove with some olive oil or any oil really over medium high heat. Then you just wanna pack the latka mixture quite tightly. I like to use a portion scoop for that and just kind of pack it into the portion scoop and then scoop them out into portions in the, into the pan. And then once they're really crispy on one side, which takes about six, seven minutes, flip them over, finish cooking them on the other side, which takes about four or five minutes and then you're done. You can eat them any way you'd eat normal latkes. So I usually put a bunch of sour cream over top. You can have these with breakfast, kind of like a breakfast hash brown kind of thing. I made a really giant version a couple weeks ago where I just did one big one instead of the individual ones. And it's just a really nice treat. Moving right along into recipe number two, which is a very silky and delicious rutabaga soup with apple and smoked cheddar. This is one of the coziest things I can possibly imagine eating on like a really nice fall evening or like a crispy fall day when you're at home on a Sunday and it, you just want something like a nice lunch, a nice lunch to dip your sandwich into. So for this rutabaga soup with smoked cheddar and rosemary, I used one onion and I cut it roughly into chunks and then one medium sized rutabaga as well as one Granny Smith apple. And I just peeled and chopped everything into kind of rough chunks. 
I threw the onion and the rutabaga and the apple into a kind of medium sized pot with olive oil or butter and some salt. And I kind of just sweated that together for about five minutes. At which point I added about a liter of chicken stock. You can use vegetable stock for this. And this is a point where you can also add an optional 125 mils or basically half a cup of beer, which I, don't, I just didn't add it here because I didn't have any, but beer adds such a nice flavor and it also helps to kind of break down the protein in the cheese and that makes it so that the cheese is likelier to stay creamy and smooth rather than go gritty in the soup. So that's kind of a hot tip. And then I threw in a bay leaf and the rosemary, you can use fresh or dried, and brought it to a boil, reduced it to a simmer and just simmered it till everything was really nice and tender and then blended it up until smooth. The smoothness is up to you. You can use a high powered blender if you want it to be like silk or you can use, you know, what I had, which is a hand blender and it's kind of pretty smooth. <laughs> and then once that's all blended, it's also kind of cooled slightly, which is a good time to add the cheese. So I'm using smoked cheddar here and it's about a medium aged smoked cheddar, which is nice. If it was really sharp and aged for a long time, it wouldn't melt as smoothly into the soup. So I do like to use like a higher moisture kind of younger cheese here. If you're not into smoked cheddar, you can use pretty much any really good melting cheese. Like Gruyere is nice because it gets really, really silky when it melts. You could even use Brie or even like a goat cheese if you wanted. Once the cheese is in, it's just time to give it a taste and adjust the consistency. If it's too thick, you can thin it out a bit. If it's not salty enough, you can add some salt. This is what the soup looks like when it's done. So I have a thing about soups that are way too thick. I think this is as thick as I would go. It needs to be pourable. This is the consistency I like. It's nice and thick, but it's not baby food. It's still pourable and it's still kind of drinkable, if you will. So I'm just gonna bowl it up. And then the best part of eating soup, in my opinion, is the same as the best part of eating baked potatoes, which is to put a bunch of stuff on top. Am I right, people? <laughs> so what do we got here? We've got, oh, we've got some bacon because I crisped up some bacon earlier. I don't think anyone will complain about that. If you're a vegetarian, obviously leave it off. I also have some pumpkin seeds, which is kind of weird because I feel like it should go in a pumpkin soup or a squash soup, but I don't have rutabaga seeds, so it's getting pumpkin seeds. What can I say? And these are freshly roasted from our pumpkins yesterday. Mm. And I always like a little drizzle of dairy. Come on. And that's it. That's our rutabaga soup with smoked cheddar and rosemary. Look how good it looks. Mmm. Okay, so the bacon is amazing on there, but even without the bacon, it's just a really nice soup. Actually, I'm really into this. Mmm. From the seeds, you guys. So, <laughs> I'd love to know what you would put on this soup or what you're going to put on this soup. Tell me all about it in the comments. Last but not least, it's time to get back to the mash. So I've had these veggies kind of simmering away for, I'm gonna say about 15 minutes. When you're doing any veggies for mash, it's always nice to do them extra, like kind of very well cooked, kind of overcook them a bit, cause then it'll just make the mashing process easier. So I'm just gonna drain these into the sink. How you go about your mashing is totally up to you. 
I'm gonna give it a go through my potato ricer because I love how smooth it gets. I'm not sure if the carrots are gonna participate that willingly, but we are gonna try it anyway. If you like a rougher mash, just use a potato masher or like even a fork. Um, but if you like it really smooth, you can do this or you can use a blender even. Ooh, because uh, rutabagas aren't very starchy, they don't ever get gummy. Like sometimes when you do mashed potatoes in the blender, it'll get super gummy, um, but it's not the case in this case. I mean, there are some potatoes in here, but I think they'd be fine. So yeah, looks like they're taking well to this ricer. I'm just gonna carry on. <laughs> I'm curious if anyone else thinks that rutabaga is about to have their moment in the limelight. I really don't know why they're not more popular. They're, they're not bitter at all. They're really easy to work with and they're tasty. And they're cheap and you can get them anywhere. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Use a receptacle that has higher walls than this so that your veggies don't go spraying all over the kitchen. That's my recommendation. Anyway, rutabaga, next big thing. Okay, so we made a bit of a mess, but I'm fine with that. Now we've got this pretty smooth rutabaga, carrot, and potato mixture. The reason I like to add the potato is because carrot and rutabaga on their own don't have a lot of starch. And so it doesn't really lend well to a really creamy mash. So the potato helps with that. Finishing touches in this puppy. Um, salt to taste, butter, I mean, to taste, <laughs> I guess. I've been really enjoying this mash lately with a bit of grainy mustard. So nice, rutabaga is sweet and mustard is, you know, spicy. And the smooth texture with the like pop of grainy mustard is so nice. My mom got me this mustard from a market nearby from a lady called the Mustard Lady. I don't know if she has an Instagram or anything. I don't know if she's uh, online or ships worldwide or whatever, but we can look her up later on. I'll put a link in the description if that's the case, because it's really nice mustard. It's basically like, there's no goo in between. It's just straight up crunch. So I'm putting like a heaped teaspoon in because I like mustard. And also with mustard, I love a little bit of maple syrup or honey just to kind of really work with the sweetness of the rutabaga. This makes it feel really holiday you know, yam, baked yams kind of vibe, but not so over the top. So I'm just gonna work that in and it's done. You can see the carrot bits still because carrots didn't really, they don't ever really get that smooth. If you want it to be perfectly homogenous, you'll go through, you'll use a food processor or a blender or whatever, but I'm happy with the like little bits of orange. I actually wouldn't do this with a ricer again, if I were to be honest. I think it was a bit of a pain, but to each their own. Okay, so let's try this mash. Mmm. Mmm. Sweet and poppy and creamy, and you can definitely taste the rutabaga. It's great. All I need now are a few people to eat this with and maybe a couple sausages on the side. It's dinner time. I'm excited. A big pile of mash is the perfect thing for a cozy Sunday night dinner. I uh, threw some sausages in the oven earlier and oh, they're hot. They're pretty dark, but that's <laughs> because I was completely ignoring them while I was making a rutabaga video. I think they'll be just fine. And then my favorite kind of vegetable to have with sausage dinner is peas. Just straight up. You can put a little butter and salt on them, of course. 
that's our dinner. Does it look good? That's it for the rutabaga episode. I am pretty sure that there will be more rutabaga recipes coming soon. And if you missed the episode from a couple weeks ago where I did uh, Flavor by Otolenghi, that cookbook, there's a really nice rutabaga recipe in there. Um, a curry crusted rutabaga steak, which I showed on that episode. And yeah, eat some rutabagas, they're so good. And try all these recipes and let me know how they go. The full recipes for the latka and the soup are on howtomakedinner.com and the mash, there's no recipe for the mash. It's just, just mash. <laughs> it's just what I showed you. So I hope you like this one and I'll see you next week. Do you want a bit more bacon? Mm. <laughs> So is it? <laughs> so there you have it, folks. It's uh, kids love rutabaga. That's just the way it is. Let's go ahead and make some rutabaga recipes, shall we? <laughs> Welcome to Rutabaga 101. Stick around, and we'll have some fun. <laughs> <laughs>